G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, maybe that dip really was it and it is over and we're going onwards and upwards, upwards from here. Bitcoin has broken over that $52,000 barrier and starting to move quite fast. So really, now we just need to wait and see. It still could be a fake out, it's possible. It needs to really get above about $57,500 sort of and $7,580 thereabouts. A candle close that is, we've had it wick higher. But if we get a candle close above there, then we have broken that kind of old all time high. So we'll have a look at that in the charts at the moment, but let's have a look here. All right, $1.7 trillion and things are starting to move fast and we got some really good news stories up there. We got a couple that aren't so good as well, but you know, we're gonna get, I'm gonna give you all the information I can here, not just all the good stuff. If there's bad stuff there, then we'll obviously report on that as well. But predominantly it's all good news anyway. So 1.7 trillion, BTC dominance climbing up again, just a little bit, sitting under 60% uh, percent though. ETH dominance still sitting around 12.5% and gas prices have moved up a little bit. So that tells me that things are starting to move. So number one, cash sitting on the sides that was probably sitting in Ethereum, uh, sorry, sitting in Tether, USDC and things like that. Now it's also meaning people are possibly getting into uh, the altcoins as well and likely that's what it is. It's a bit of all of the above. All right, let's have a look in the last 24 hours. We can already see, look, there's a lot of green here at the moment. So what's really moved in the last 24 hours? What's boomed? Oh, Chili's, that is on such a rise. I'm kicking myself. I talked about getting into it uh, and didn't, and obviously I've missed this. But look, you're never going to get them all. That's just the way it is. I'm still happy with the things that I've invested in. They're not doing too bad. But Chili's, well done. I mean, look at that over seven days as well. They are absolutely screaming. So well done. Terra Luna, Her Hedera Hashgraph. Like, look at those. They're almost vertical. This is somewhat concerning when things kind of go that vertical though, but uh, you know, nano, there's a good chance these things are gonna have a pullback. It's just about when that might happen. This could go up much, much higher before it has a pullback. And that's really the hard part is trying to have a look at the charts and things and say, all right, no, I think it's nearly at the top and it's gonna pull back. And again, here we can see that maybe this is the start of a pullback, but this is an hourly. This can change very, very quickly. There still could be a whole lot left in this. It could do something like chilies. So maybe it's got another couple hundred percent to go up, but maybe not as well. But we can see some great double digit gains here. And again, really anything above 15%, that's when we're starting to talk good gains and even, you know, for cryptocurrencies, 15% for a year and, you know, uh, standard uh, stocks and things like that would be a great move. We do it in 24 hours sometimes and sometimes a whole lot more. And then look, we can go down underneath there. There's still some good double digit gains. They're just not sort of amazing. But it's not always everything goes up to the upside and look, almost rarely does everything go to the upside. So what's lost? Is there any losses and even better? question some losses there all right so voyager again they had such a big pump so they're starting to retrace ren's pulling back a little bit avalanche but again you know they already had these massive pumps these are projects that have done extremely well so for instance we can see amp here look down 14 percent but we'd have to go back and check you know the previous you know two weeks to a month before that and i'm guessing it probably performed quite well you earn finance but look even with these losses they're single digit losses and none of them are even above five percent so this is a quite small losses and again while some of them might have losses in the seven days like voyager it's down 20 percent over seven days it had such a sort of you know quite a pump that of course it was gonna pull back at some stage. All right, so moving on, let's have a look at the chart itself. So here we go, here's Bitcoin. And we can see we've broke three trend lines here. This looks like it's ready to just keep going. There's no guarantees. We still got a little bit of a ways to go to see whether this is you know, a, a confirmed breakout. Well, it is a confirmed breakout, but a confirmed move higher than the last all time high. As we can see, we go here, it's around about 57,570-ish dollars going off Bitstamp. That's what we need a candle close above to confirm this is the next leg up. Still could be a fake out. So again, we could get to here and just roll over. I don't think it looks like that at the moment, although the volume is a little bit low there. But again, we'll have a look at some of the 
stories that are coming up that make me think, yeah, this is probably legit. We probably found the bottom. That was it back over here on the 28th of Feb, and now it's probably going to move upwards. But there's no guarantees in life and never financial advice. All right, let's move on to some of the stories. So here's one that's a little bit disappointing. All right, Ripple and MoneyGram to wind down partnership. So while the partnership between Ripple and MoneyGram has been officially terminated, the two firms have expressed they are open to resuming collaboration in the future. So there is some upside to this because Ripple, the currency itself, it works pretty well. Again, you know, debatable around its structure and all the rest of it and being centralized and things like that, but it does work really well. And for a while there, it was being used uh, in certain places. But this whole uh, SEC lawsuit thing really has just yeah, put a hammer into it at the moment. And until that gets cleared up, yeah, I don't think XRP is going to do too well. But I do think Ripple, the company itself, will likely uh, stick around. But again, we'll have to wait and see. But this isn't great news for any uh, XRP holders. And I'm one of them. But again, I've said this story before. I sold pretty much all of my XRP when this whole SEC thing started. And unfortunately, I sold it at about... Oh, I think 40 cents or something like that and it was up at 90 cents and I couldn't take advantage of those profits and overall I had lost some money uh, with that but look that's investing that's the way it goes uh, you know I'm not complaining as you know other projects that I've put in to have done way better and have made up for those losses all right the NFT space just keeps going so former DC comic artist Jose Delbo made 1.85 million in four days auctioning 914 NFTs depicting the popular fictional uh, heroine, Wonder Woman, fictional character, or heroine, yeah. Uh, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> it sounds like the drug, but anyway, Wonder Woman. So NFTs are still skyrocketing, uh, and I think the prices will continue to go up. But as I said previously, I'm just not sure in the sort of mid-term in the really really long term the good ones they will continue to go up in price but then it feels like there's a bit of kind of mania around that at the moment but look again i'm not i'm no art expert and that's why i haven't really got involved in nfts themselves more sort of the platforms that they're traded on and again you know ethereum where most of them if not nearly all of them are sort of being traded engine things like that you know decentraland could be uh, something else you could look into that whole kind of gaming uh, space and a lot of the nfts uh, will have to do with gaming in the future I think but I, I think there will be uh, plenty of room for just the regular kind of art space as well but again we even spoke about how NFTs are now also being used in the DeFi space so it's an interesting space for sure uh, I just don't know enough about art itself to really delve you know invest too much into it because knowing my luck I'll be one of the ones that'll invest in stuff that'll just be worth nothing all right moving on so, anticipating Ethereum 2.0, ETH Wales hold nearly 70% of the total supply. I am sort of kicking myself that I sold some ETH now, but look, you know, it was sold at a profit. I didn't lose anything, so, you know, no one ever lost money uh, taking profits. It's just unrealized gains. And I didn't sell a whole lot. It literally was, I don't even think it was 10% actually of all my ETH. Uh, it was less. Now, Ethereum whales have been on a buying spree since November 2020, currently holding 68.7% of the total supply, while Grayscale has doubled their ETH stack. Although Ethereum's price has tumbled by a few hundred dollars since its peak in February, whales have continued to accumulate large, large portions of the second largest dig, uh, digital asset. Recent data revealed that large Ethereum investors own nearly 70% of the total supply, and that's the highest level since late 2017. So it'll be interesting to know, you know what's considered a whale. I'm going to say it's probably something over 1,000 ETH or something like that. So addresses holding 10,000 have been gradually uh, building. I'm sure, you know, people owning a lot less have been building as well, but I'm guessing that's what they call a whale, someone who owns 10,000 or more ETH. Uh, I'm definitely not <laughs> in that camp. I would love to be. That would be amazing. Uh, but, you know, I have some ETH, so that's better, you know, better none, better than having none. All right, moving on. More ETFs coming out. So yet another Bitcoin ETF is to reach the markets in Canada as the country's securities regulator has issued a receipt for the final prospectus for CI Global Asset Management's 
uh, application, dubbed uh, CI Galaxy Bitcoin ETF. It's expected to launch on the Toronto Stock Exchange on March 9th. And Mike Novogratz's digital, uh, Galaxy Digital Management will act as the sub-advisor. So obviously, you know, Novogratz has been bullish on Bitcoin for a long time. Uh, and he's, you know, been through the highs and he's been through the lows and he can see what's coming now and he's putting even more money into this space. So, yeah, there you go. Another ETF. It is in Canada. We still haven't got one approved in the States yet, but I really don't think that will be too far away. Uh, and there are other, other ones coming. Australia is looking at uh, getting one and there are some other countries that are doing the same. So there's going to be plenty of space to invest in a Bitcoin ETF. Excuse me. Even if it's not going to be in America. All right, Norwegian oil mogul sets up $58 million entity to buy Bitcoin. The institutional Bitcoin frenzy continues to spread like an epidemic. After several United States mega corporations added the digital currency to their balance sheet, the floodgates have opened to major institutions across the world. Norwegian holding company, ACA ASA, said today that it will establish a new unit dedicated to Bitcoin investment and the digital assets underlying technology. So we can see the dip was being bought up quite heavily. There's, you know, there's proof in the price moving and just these stories starting to come out. Now you have to ask about the price of Tesla and MicroStrategy, whether they will now start to pump again, because really their, their stock price started to fall as Bitcoin wasn't going up. But as soon as it goes back up, the, the price of Bitcoin that is, just wait to see everybody trying to pile back into these stocks. That's exactly what's going to happen because they're going to be worth a whole lot more. Uh, and again, that is, that's, you know, again, what they call dumb money. People who are just jumping in and out of things, not having a whole lot of faith. And they're usually the ones that get wrecked. The people that do the best aren't kind of the day traders and swing traders and things like that. They're simple investors. They, you know, hopefully have done their research or simply got lucky, whichever one it is got in at a good price and they just hold. They don't worry about the kind of day to day or maybe even you know week to week or month to month fluctuations and prices and things. They have a long term plan, at least you know a year, two, three, five, ten years. Uh, and yeah, for Tesla, micro strategy, I think they're gonna do just fine even when the next bear market comes. Yes, again, people will likely panic and get out of those stocks because Bitcoin's going down. Uh, and you know we'll have to wait and see how much of the Bitcoin they hold on to and sell, but I am somewhat confident that they're going to have bought the Bitcoin at a price that will never be seen again anyway. So yeah, again, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they were really, really smart. Maybe they weren't. I personally think they were really, really smart, particularly uh, MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor. I think he'll go down as one of the greatest investors in history. All right. Bit of bad news for BlockFi here, and I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, they said it is uh, technical sort of issues upgrading the platform, but BlockFi has temporarily paused new signups to the platform. So all the current people who are uh, part of BlockFi and investing with them seems there's no issues. It's just new people can't sign up at the moment, uh, and that's a bit disappointing. But look, these things happen, particularly when there's a bull run coming. They just get overloaded, and they're you know unfortunately not ready for the run that's coming uh, and these things happen so systems go down so we can see here a note at the top of the website currently reads new signups for BlockFi are temporarily paused existing BlockFi clients continue to have full access to the platform so I'm sure this is just sort of something minor that they're going to get fixed fairly quickly because they don't want to be losing any further customers and hopefully in the next day or two that will be up and running and if you want to join BlockFi, and they may be up and running as of you know the time of this video, that may already be fixed, but there's a link down below. And if you use my link, you'll get a bit of a bonus for signing up, and I'll get a bit of a bonus for you signing up as well. But if you don't want to use my link, that's fine. You can go up, you can go ahead and just sign up uh, the normal way by just searching it on Google if you like. But I would appreciate you using my link. That would be very nice. All right, moving on. Bitcoin's taproot activation gains momentum from new speedy trial proposal. Now, this is the largest upgrade seen in seven years, and many are proposing uh, projects to top it off, on top of it, sorry. So Bitcoin developers have been debating the best way to activate the taproot upgrade for at least a year. Some are hopeful a new proposal called Speedy Trial might put an end to the debate by bringing forth a solution that more developers can get behind. 
ideated by Blockstream developer Russell O'Connor and written up on the block Bitcoin, Bitcoin developer email list by technical bit writer David Hardy. Harding, sorry, speedy trial would take a quicker approach than some of the other proposals in determining if miners are ready for activation of Taproot. All of the largest mining Bit Larning, I'm seriously struggling. <laughs> seriously struggling. All of the largest mining pools have already indicated uh, they plan to upgrade. So it looks like this is going to happen. There's a lot of hype behind Taproot. Uh, and the lightning pro lightning network and things like that so things are looking good and i think this is really going to be needed for bitcoin to take that next step there's going to be more that's going to be required than just simply this upgrade uh, i can almost guarantee that there will be further upgrades that will be needed as the whole space just continues to grow and continues to develop but it's good to see that bitcoin has not just decided this is uh, you know we've done everything and now we're just going to go to sleep we don't ever have to change they will obviously have to continue to upgrade and innovate and all the rest of it so i'm interested to see where bitcoin can go from here it's the whole you know the gas fees as well for bitcoin they go up as the network gets uh, congested just like ethereum so if we can get again you know lightning network and all these kind of things happening and there's talk about having smart contracts run on bitcoin as well very very interesting so good to see bitcoin is still developing as well and it's yeah again not just gone all right we've done what we're supposed to and that's it now we don't do anything else moving on and uh, NY Dig, the firm that facilitated Mass Mutual's $100 million Bitcoin buy last year, has raised $200 million from a cadre of big name investors. The round included Stone Ridge Holdings Group, Morgan Stanley, New York Life, Mass Mutual, Soros Fund Management, and FS Investments. NY Dig announced on Monday past, invest past investors, uh, Bessemer Venture Partners, and FinTech Collective also participated. So plenty more money coming. Again, yes, it went quiet for a little while, but now all the news is coming up that more institutions were buying in. We're always going to have pullbacks. There's going to be a point where people are going to be like, I'm going to take some profit. And that's what people have done. But those profits uh, for some people are now, you know, others' initial investment. So very, very interesting. Moving on. Right, Bitcoin's 2021 returns destroy everything on Wall Street, Goldman Sachs says. So yes, they are pretty bullish, obviously. As of March 4th, Bitcoin's year-to-date return at about 70% was roughly double that for the next oldest competitor, the energy sector, at about 35%, according to Goldman Sachs' latest US uh, report. The comparisons could become even more flattering to Bitcoin now that a recent bout of selling in US stocks has taken place and the Standard and Poor's 500 index indexes year-to-date return to roughly zero flat on the year. So are we going to finally break away from that correlation? I mean, there was downturn in the market and you know the whole cryptocurrency market had kind of had a bit of a downturn, but now it seems like we're on the up. But I guess we'll have to wait and see if the uh, traditional stock market is back on the way up. With the reports of the new stimulus packages and things like coming like that coming out, I would say that the traditional stock market is likely going to go up as well. So I think that correlation will st still hold fairly tight. That doesn't mean the correlation is the same in the percentage gains. It just simply means that if the stock market's going up, we're likely to go up. If the stock market's going down, we're likely to go down and our ups will be much bigger but also our downs will be much bigger that is just simply the space that we are in all right moving on so argo blockchain joins the texas bitcoin mining rush global currency mining company argo blockchain will construct a cryptocurrency mining facility in west west texas Today, the London-based cryptocurrency mining firm listed on the London Stock Exchange announced the acquisition of New York-based DPN LLC, which gives Argo access to up to 800 megawatts of electric power in a 320-acre plot of land in West Texas. The firm also announced plans to build its new energy-efficient 200-megawatt mining facility over the next 12 months. So again, things are building. They continue to build. Yeah. It's probably a good uh, chance that that really was the dip. So we go back to the chart. That probably was it. That probably was the low. Again, no guarantees in life. We'll have to wait and see. 
Bitcoin really does need to get over that kind of fifty-seven and a half thousand dollar mark. Needs to close above there. Uh, for that, anything less with a rollover is just a bit of a fake out. And then, if we do seem to happen to roll over, it is possible that we come down and test these lows. I'm not sure that's what's going to happen. It's just you know we're breaking above, breaking out of these downtrends now, but we haven't completely broken out of it. And the volume is quite low at the moment. So that's really what I'm watching out for. I am optimistic at the moment. I do think that this probably was the bottom. But look, I won't know until we've broken out above here. And even then, really, we can have another fake out from here. Is we just get over the top and then we have a really big sell off. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there's you know too many people buying the dip. Sort of the 47-ish thousand dollar mark again was sort of roughly around here. Well, actually a little bit lower, 47, more about there. It was really aggressively being bought up. It didn't stay below there for too long. There was only a couple of days where it dipped below that. And then after that, it's just been moving up. So that's where, at least I should say, that's what I'm watching for at the moment. I'm not doing too much investing. Again, I've got cash on the side, but I really am waiting for a big dip or the bottom of the... The next bear market really is where I'll deploy the cash that, that I have sitting on the side. Other than I'll just dollar cost average in a little bit uh, on certain projects when I think there's a good entry point and things like that. All right, well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment. But whether it's made up some of the losses that we've had before, that's the million dollar question. And I'll see you next time.